because this is definitely a bike of extremes which is even more impressive but it just feels so sorted and natural and I've just got all the traction and time in the world to watch what Adrian's doing and go right am I going to tackle that? My name's Guy Kesteven and I've been re professionally reviewing mountain bikes for nearly 25 years now but that makes me something of a youngster and an amateur compared to the guy here with me now Adrian Carter from Pace Cycles because today I'm in a mystery Yorkshire forest testing and live ride reviewing the brand new Pace RC295 so I know from experience that Adrian is a handy man to follow on single track so <laughs> don't be surprised if he vanishes off in front anyway you're here to learn about the bike I'm riding so RC295 135 mil rear travel 29 or 27.5 plus mullet in the back if you use an offset bushing in the top of the shock eye so you know it's not an instant change <laughs> and uh, guide RS brakes being effectively used there but what really makes geometry stand out is slack even by slack trail bike standards so 64.5 is the steepest it goes and that's 140 mil fork in high chip drop it to low bushing whoa <laughs> and it goes as low as 64 or 63.5 depending on your fork i mean that's that's downhill bike level and properly low bottom bracket it's even in its highest setting it's under 330 mil so comes a standard with 165 mil cranks it just means the bike feels so planted underneath you because this is <laughs> proper slip and slide stuff down here and it just feels hey up <laughs> full suspension advantage there <laughs> That one, three, five, coming in handy. And also, 76 degree seat angle, keeping you nicely weighted forwards in the mix. But it's situations like this, when it's proper sketchy and tricky, that a bike that's this sorted and stable and really kind of intuitively balanced and anchored absolutely proves it's worth and all those three years of development that adrian's put in means when you're into a pretty hairy three seconds of trail it just feels so calm and collected and it's absolutely i've just got all the traction and time in the world to watch what adrian's doing and go right am i going to tackle that just superbly controlled really really impressive Nice job, sir. And obviously, that 76 ish seat angle really helps put your weight forward when you're climbing. But what Adrian has done with the shock tune, because it's quite a low pressure shock system, I'm running 160 psi in this deluxe on the back, he's actually gone for the lowest possible low speed compression rating on this shock. So it's super sensitive. So the traction is absolutely outstanding and there's no obvious kickback or pull through on the pedals it's actually got limited anti-squat so you can bounce it a bit out of the saddle if you get really jerky but just take a bit of time to get that damper squared away again it's another example where you're just not thinking about the bike you've got loads of feel in terms of pedal to tire contact and because it's such a stiff back end there's certainly no wooliness, there's no lack of clarity in that connection but you're not getting jumped and jerked around all over the place and normally I find those bikes a bit mushy but this pedals really really sharply Adrian has warned me about wide bars on this one because you get 800 as standard and obviously you can cut them down but that gives you massive leverage to really kind of 
exploit the stiffness and accuracy of this bike and the front end 32 mil reach stem so loads of agility and a really light steering feel through those 44 mil offset forks but it's just so precise and this pike ultimate fork is an absolute beauty definitely kind of the benchmark mid-travel control fork at the moment and it's this bike rolling chassis or right, either spec only comes with the ultimate fork so two point charger 2.1 damper for just that impeccably controlled kind of mid-stroke feel but epic sensitivity and again that just really complements that back end and the free flow to set up on this 295 i mean it's a system that's been developed by adrian since pretty much 2002 i think he was saying and the idea is by squatting the shock at both ends you can do really clever things with the leverage and spring rate as the shock goes through its travel i mean the deluxe is a good shock anyway but it just makes it feel absolutely superb like some sort of super tuned thousand pound coil setup and chatting to adrian when they were prototyping this bike they did run it with a 36 on the front 150 mil travel and fox damper on the back but they just couldn't get that rear tune correct on it so although they do still list a Kashima in inverted commas upgrade I would absolutely categorically say just stay with the rock shocks they work so well you know the fact I was allowed to carry on just chatting trying to remain calm there <laughs> when I was right on the edge of that stream bank with one leg waggling which luckily you couldn't see out of the corner of the shot but it is just it's ridiculously controlled this bike and yet still super poppy and agile like a short travel sort of 120mm bike just the way that top linkage and lower linkage rotate at different speeds so shock rate is changing at different points in the stroke so when I need to lever it up that little climb there no movement or distraction through my legs just tons of traction and really planted feel and yeah all the traction you need and really so supple are all over at the base there and obviously this is quite slow speed techie woodsy stuff we're riding today but I've done my typical battering session around Stainburn on this bike and around uh, Gisburn as well both brutally kind of belligerent very rocky very flow three trail centers and it performed just as well through there really really connected yet positive through the pedals and that is a really really hard trick to pull off and it'll take a 61 mil wide 29er tire at the back so 2.4 or 2.5 depending on brand and tread pattern or it'll take 27.5 2.8 inch tire if you're running it mullet and that's on a 35 mil internal rim so proper big volume back end if you want to try that latest smaller wheel bigger tire trend but obviously you know full carbon is a big old commitment three frame sizes for the main frame small medium extra large same back end on all of them same 432 mil tight rear end but oh, the whole bike just feels so composed and sorted even when it's proper greasy slippery roots like this and then when you want to put the power down super supple start stroke and then a really supportive propulsive phase as well but enough progression that 135 mil always feels like plenty i started riding this and it's actually blowing through its travel a bit so i thought oh, 
can do with the volume spacer then. What's up to Adrian? He's like, oh, by the way, when we meet up, I must put those volume spacers back in. So, uh, that's, uh, I'll let him off that one. <laughs> and what I would say is it's definitely a very efficient and business-like bike. Oh, hey, up, hey, up, hey, up, hey, up. <laughs> very concise, very, very clean cut. Very accurate in all its decisions. And that agility, you can see the front end just moving around there. 32 mil stem, even with that big 800 mil bar, just drifts that in beautifully there. Coping with Adrian's let me sort it out. <laughs> Root instructions, and then straight on the power. Just so clean. Impressively controlled to ride. Absolutely loving it. I mean, I'll be honest, that clinical feel didn't quite get it at first, but now, once you know what you're dealing with, this is an absolute weapon. A real skill and fitness flattering machine, which is exactly, you know, what Adrian was aiming for all the way over. Work those Maxxis tyres to the maximum. <laughs> he has properly aced it with this one. If you're wondering whether this RC295 have been worth the wait. Unequivocally, yes. <laughs> and it feels so sharp under power, yet controlled when things get drifty or sketchy. Our agent throws in a last minute turn. And then we need to put the power down. Boom. You know, superb kicking acceleration but with good adhesion even over stutter roots and bumps like that I mean it doesn't completely erase those roots you're definitely aware of them but just the precision and the clarity and the connection as you hit each one so you can judge when to apply power or not and the fact it doesn't disturb the attitude of the bike or kick up or spin or squat down when you do apply that power absolutely impeccable and obviously it's a three mode shock anyway so if there's a lot of this steady grind steep stuff just flick it into pedal or fully lock it out under 3k for the frame in weight with a shock for this large and then 14k just under even with a pretty workmanlike build on it really a big alloy bars and such certainly no slouch when it comes to altitude gain and obviously because it doesn't pull back as much on the axle it does catch square edges a bit harder so you can get a bit more of a beating through kind of extended rock garden sections but then if you're on the power there's less of a beating so it's all a case of balance and pros and cons and it's just such a stiff bike not just that big boxy front end and that really broad you know single-sided stay supported rear swing arm the linkages themselves super solid a really broad lower linkage slightly asymmetric top to bottom because they're a clamped together linkage means it holds the shock more firmly as well it comes in two spec levels you've got this gx ultimate with the pike ultimate fork there's an xt ultimate version rolling chassis and frame only setups as well as these really practical component packages you're also getting some nice practical details. And you've got a 10 year warranty on the frame. You've got Enduro Max bearings throughout. You've got oversized pivot axles for those bearings. So that helps contribute towards the stiffness. You've got that clip on rock guard armor for the belly of the bike. You've got protective tubes for the cables and brake pipe. Bottle cage bosses in a place where you can actually fit a bottle cage easily. I'm not gonna deny that at first, it almost felt too polished, too controlled to really have a character, but what that translates to is an incredible amount 
of reaction time and control. Even things even, even when things get properly techy. And I wish you did have fancy machine linkages for a bit of pace heritage and fancier pivot caps. But I am absolutely gutted. I'm gonna to have to give this bike back. This is, I'm gonna say it, this is my new benchmark for all round trail precision and attack. Pace. That's what it says under there. RC 295. Absolutely impeccably controlled. So, massive thanks to you guys for watching this video. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for making it possible. Uh, Pace haven't paid for this video. I was just dead excited to have a go on it. Thanks to Gore for test kit, Camelback, 100% gloves, Endura for the trousers, and Physic for the boots. And reviews on all of that kit will be coming up shortly. So, thanks again. I've been Guy Kestivan. This has been Guy Kest TV. And that is Adrian Carter and the absolutely belted Pace RC295.